G'day guys, today we're sitting in the back of my 2014 Toyota Hilux. I wanted to share with you uh, a new addition to the auxiliary battery system that I have fitted into this vehicle, um, and that is this new Renology battery monitor. So this is a $70 special off uh, Amazon, um, and so far it's been, been really, really good. So I'll, uh, I'll give you a bit of a breakdown of how I installed it, um, and then uh, we'll sort of run over how, uh, how it's been so far. Um, so first of all, for a bit of context, what you're looking at is a recycled alarm enclosure. This was actually originally part of an access control system uh, at a building that I decommissioned. Um, this was materials on hand for me, so it was something I found quite useful in order to put all my bits in there for the electronics for my tray. Um, once I took my drawers out, because all this used to live down there, um, this, this gave me the perfect, uh, perfect place to stash it all. Um, looking inside, fuses, uh, just extra cable uh, for this, which is the... Uh, central locking system for the canopy um, and we've also got a relay in here which powers some of the emergency lighting uh, on this vehicle as well uh, and this also pipes into some of the additional lighting that I've got here uh, in the canopy um, for when I go camping or just when I'm trying to find my tools. Um, pretty good setup as far as I'm concerned. Um, not many improvements that I really have on the horizon as far as that's concerned other than waterproofing the top of this. Um, to address the elephant in the room, the reason that that's pulsing like that uh, is because it's currently charging. Uh, this particular vehicle's auxiliary battery is charged uh, from both solar and from the vehicle's alternator, and because I have the solar currently plugged in, um, it is going to keep doing that. It is worth mentioning that is probably the only thing I dislike about this battery monitor, is the fact that it will start flashing like that when it is charging, and there doesn't seem to be any way to turn it off. Um, you can see it is now the sun's gone behind a cloud, so the arrows have turned off and it's now gone back to sleep. But every time the sun comes out, like it has then, it'll, it'll do this uh, again. Uh, let's run through the meter, um, so you get you guys a bit familiar with what we're looking at here. So, um, it's actually a pretty pretty decent system, although the, the screen could be a little bit, a little bit better. Um, turn the backlight back on. Uh, it's a 102 amp hour battery I've got under the hood, so I've programmed that in here, I'll talk about that in a sec. And 102 amp hours is 100%, so that's also in there as well. Uh, you can see the voltage on the battery is 13.3 volts, which is right. We've got a positive, which means it's currently being charged, as we can also see by the arrows here. And we can also see what wattage is going in there as well. Uh, this number will go in the opposite direction when we start drawing off the battery. Uh, and this timer here will give us an indication of roughly how much time is remaining on the battery uh, at the current rate of drain. Uh, so it is a pretty intuitive system um, and quite affordable for what it is. For only $70, you are getting uh, a fair bit. Uh, the amp hours and the percentage will both go down together so you'll see how many amp hours you have left and what total percentage you have left, that's good for calculating. Um, and all of this information is based off of what you set in the menu. I'll we'll jump into that now. Let's go back to the top of the menu here. So first of all, capacity, 102. Uh, full for this battery is 12.7. Um, so this is a flooded deep cycle style battery, so 12.7 is considered to be full. Uh, and 11.8 is considered essentially to be empty. Um, anything below 11.8, the battery is not coming back. In fact, I probably wouldn't recommend even getting it that low. Um, but that's round about where you probably want it sitting for m most batteries, but don't use that. Don't take my word for it. You should set it based off what your battery manufacturer tells you. Power off is the uh, the voltage that this whole thing will turn off, not just the backlight, the whole thing. Um, it's just another way to conserve uh, power and not nuke out batteries. Alarm, this is set off amp hours. So say you've got a 100 amp hour battery and you want it to give you an alarm when it gets down to 50%. If you set that to 50 amp hours, you'll get an alarm. It just beeps at you once every few seconds. Um, that can be quite used. This, this is a bit of a difficult setting. Uh, think of this as a automatic uh, adjustment for how many amp hours the battery now has remaining serviceable based on cycles. So what that means, if you understand uh, the basics of batteries, is that the more cycles you run a battery through, you know, discharge and charge, discharge and charge, the lower the overall capacity of the battery will be, the lifespan of the battery is being decreased. Um, this is an automatic calculation that will lower the total amp hours of the uh, battery over a period of time as the meter measures it. It is worth mentioning that unless your battery is brand new when you install it, and you have a reliable source for this 
uh, for this value, uh, it's not really going to do you any benefit to set it otherwise. It's also worth mentioning that a lot of manufacturers, you'll, you'll get a graph uh, if you read the data sheet, um, the percentage value will actually shift. Um, it will actually change over time depending on how many cycles it's had. So like certain batteries have a, a steeper fall off. So it's not, it's not really a super important setting to, to need to change. Um, most people know when they've installed their battery and you'll usually get a vibe for it pretty quick. Um, when you install like a, a fridge or something and you go, well, normally when I plug my fridge into my battery's full, I'll get, you know, two days off of it. I'm only getting like a day off of it now. That's going to give you a good indication uh, that the battery is probably starting to get towards the end of its life. So yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty solid system and I definitely uh, would recommend it. Um, now, bef before I get into what's going in under the hood, I just want to quickly show you something. Um, so this has already got a, a shielded cable on it. It's a six meter cable, which is barely long enough for where I've installed this. Um, because it has this plug on the end, it can be quite difficult to pass through grommets. So be aware that uh, if you're drilling holes to fit this, um, you are going to need to be able to fit this connector without damaging it. Uh, this includes if you have to pass it through your firewall on your vehicle. Uh, I just thought I'd mention that because a lot of people don't always take that into consideration. All right, now I'm gonna show you sort of the rest of the vehicle as far as how the battery charging works. So up on the roof, uh, I've got a solar panel, uh, just a singular one mounted under my roof bars there. And then if I take you around the front here, I'll show you under the hood. And um, we see my two batteries under here. We've got our cranking battery. We've got our flooded deep cycle over here. I apologize, things are a bit messy at the moment. Um, and we've got our shunt here and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, you can see all the positive coming off of uh, the battery which feeds various things and the single negative line that comes off into the shunt. Um, my particular system is managed by one of these Red Arc uh, BCDC 1225D battery chargers. I cannot I cannot speak highly enough about these. These are freaking amazing. I'm not paid by Red Arc. I bought this at full price. I bought it online, so I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I can tell you unequivocally, best charger I've ever had. Um, they call this a green charger uh, because it will always favor solar when solar is available. So even though it also connects to the alternator uh, on the ute, it will favor solar um, when there is enough charge coming in off of off the solar system to to basically match what what profile it wants to send out uh, at the moment you can see that solar is available that's why the red light is on and that pulsing light there shows that we're just doing a basic top up um, charge to keep a float running um, on the battery now here um, I have a waterproof enclosure that I've installed on the top of my fuse box um, to, hint, tip, whatever you want to call it. Don't drill holes into your fuse box. Bad idea. Uh, this is actually mounted there with an incredibly uh, good quality 3M mounting tape. Um, so this shunt is what the computer in the back uses to measure everything. Now this is the real thing I want to drive home because I see people install these wrong all the time. This can be the only thing between the battery and it. You cannot be drawing anything else off the battery. So you need this to be the, the, the first or the last point of contact. So the battery connects to here, and then this connects to chassis ground, which means all the load on the negative rail is taken from chassis ground and nothing is taken from before the shunt. The only thing before the shunt is the battery. If you don't do it that way, you won't be able to measure your uh, load correctly and you'll be, you know, connect something to here, you start drawing off the battery, drawing off the battery. The computer in the back is not going to be able to tell you what's going on because it can't see it. It relies on looking at that shunt and seeing the amount of draw that is going across that shunt on the negative. Um, just to give you a bit of context as to the rest of the way this is wired up, please excuse the 50 million things coming off there like every other four-wheel drive owner. Um, this here, big 50 amp that runs to the back of the vehicle. Uh, is what powers everything back there. So this is my main positive line. Um, and that there is just uh, part of the Red Arc charger. Um, also running into my firewall there is that shielded cable I was talking about before that plugs into the back. So that goes in here. Um, and this line here, this is the, uh, beg your pardon. Nope, this one here uh, is the one that is the negative for the battery. So that comes down and plugs in there. Um, just to give you a, a bit of a, a, a hint of how I installed this, so my my shielded cable runs into the firewall through the grommet back here, and then it comes out from under there into this kick panel under here. It runs under here, into here, 
which comes out through a grommet here, it comes down, runs under the car, and in through a penetration and into the back. Um, at six meters, which is what's provided, uh, it is only just long enough. Um, but yeah, that's basically how that's been installed. Um, there's not really much more I can say about this system because I haven't had it for long enough. Um, but I do have plans to put an AGM battery in here uh, in the coming months. So I'll, I'll do another video once I've uh, had this out on the trails for a bit longer um, and played around with the system a bit more and seen how it's survived in the, in the great wilderness. Um, but yeah, I have to say so far I'm, I'm very impressed and I would definitely recommend it. That's all for me for this video. I hope that's been educational and I will see you in the next one.